Justin, thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, start by telling us a little bit about the background. How was it that you came to form the Paul Robeson Freedom School? Well, the Paul Robeson Freedom School really came out of the work of the Paul Robeson High School students. This is a school in Crown Heights, Brooklyn, that the city has been targeting for closure for many, many years. The students there are real fighters. They um, are standing up for public education. They're standing up for their school. And on May 1st of th this year, they walked out in protest of those policies and in solidarity with Occupy Wall Street and the call for a day, a general strike for workers. And the, in response to that, they were all suspended. And uh, out of that came this idea that to continue this struggle after the closure of their school. Now, what can students um, learn at the Freedom School? Uh, it's an eight-week summer camp, so to speak. What are they being taught there? The curriculum that we're trying to build together collaboratively is with parents, students, teachers, community members. It's going to be culturally relevant. Uh, it's going to be rich in the history of social justice activism, especially in this community, but really across the country. They'll be learning about the original freedom movement and the freedom schools of the 60s that came up during segregation and the Civil Rights Act, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, so much of that history that isn't really um, gone into in depth in the public schools today, that radical history of um, fighting against injustice and fighting for civil rights and human rights. Yeah, and so, so that'll be a big part of the curriculum, as well as the academics that these young people need and oftentimes aren't getting within their public education um, yeah. setting. Definitely not your typical summer camp. Uh, we have just a, a few minutes, so uh, a few seconds, I'm sorry. Talk uh, quickly about the future. Where do you want to see uh, the Freedom School down the line? So the original Freedom Schools of the 60s were never intended to be permanent institutions um, because they were meant to fix a very particular problem, which was that young people of color, especially, were not getting an adequate public education. And so the community had to step in and provide that. In the same way today in so many cities across this country, we're cutting back on public education, on teachers, we're demonizing teachers in their unions. And as a result, young people of color are not getting in so many places an adequate public education. And so to serve as an independent uh, alternative model for how public education can be done collaboratively with the community, uh, with the support of the community and parents, we're trying to build this as a model. If it will continue, we don't know. We expect it to be successful, and so we will uh, continue it as yeah. long as necessary to show that we can create community schools locally controlled and progressive in every sense of the word. Yeah, well, thank you so much for joining us and for sharing your thoughts with us. We really appreciate your time. Thank you.